Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 7 episode. I think this was episode 20. This episode was funny. Funny, funny, funny. And y'all already know what time it is. I have the black v-neck on. Not necessarily a roast, but a yeah, something like this. So let's go start from the beginning. Um, Cynthia, I'm trying to understand how your daughter's weave look better than yours. Yeah, you got more money, your daughter. You got you the one that got the money in the purse. Um, when what's the name ain't taking the money out your damn purse? But you know you had the money, so I'm understanding why the hell how we look better than yours. If if there was a her, Cynthia's daughter is very beautiful. Um, Cynthia was very Cynthia's daughter was gorgeous. Period. I liked her in that black white dress. Um, Kenya comes over. Um, I think she was trying to find out how can she still look young. There was a couple of um, there was a couple of. Where Kenya was in the confessional, she looked really, really good with the straight black hair. She looked really, really good. But it's other it was other parts that her um, Kenya's face looked like an old rag that you wash your car down with. I think you do wash, you want to just dry down an old fucking chamois. You know how just tired, withered, and just needs to go somewhere and just lay on the damn gate or some shit until we're gonna use it next time. That's what Kenya's face was looking like some of the episode. But she was cute sometimes. Um. That was cute. I I I I I didn't under you know I didn't, I really didn't understand why Kenya felt the need to try to tell Noel how to walk and all that type of stuff and smile. I I, I thought that was whack as hell. Um. Anyway, so Nene goes to Sardis or some type of professional restaurant where all the actors and actresses go and stuff while they're on Broadway and. Um, Greg is looking at the people up on the camera and he just like, and what the people in the pictures and stuff, he just like, you know, you're going to be a real one day. And I'm just like, uh -huh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe one day, um, I can see somebody drawing a picture of her with her nose looking big cause it's already big. But as far as her being on there for a serious actress or actor, 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 actress, whatever need is going to be this week. I don't see it. I just don't see it. Um, mm -hmm. That shit was wet. So, the, one of the funniest, ep one of the funniest part of the episode was when Candy sent up here trying to get sexy for Todd, and they ain't been together damn nine months. Y'all haven't even gave birth to a damn baby. You can't even, y'all can't even come up. To, I don't understand what is going on between Candy and Todd. I hope it's a joke because I just don't understand for the life of me. How y'all just ain't got no fire, no desire, no anything. Girl, you sell sex toys and dicks and plastic clits. I'm not understanding how you don't, like, what's going on with you and Todd? You need to get it together, Canada. Something's seriously going on. Um, I, I just don't get it. I just didn't get it. Um, so Riley, you know, she getting, Riley ends up walking in. She, what are you doing? And she bobbing in and. I felt like I was watching Fantasia with Mickey Mouse when she walked in. She moved in like that damn broom. Don't clean it up. She walked in and Candy got her titties out. And she's like, why you got your titties out? She was like, you need to, you need to put a button on or some shit. I was like, oh God. But Candy looked really good. Ken, you look really good with your titties out. You look really, really good. You like a sex ass cheetah. I liked it. You look you look really good. I liked it. Um, I was here for it. Da 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 da. So I thought it'd be good. Maybe Todd give us give her some of that thing thing or some shit. Maybe we'd get something going on. But child Riley walked in and she made everything dry. She walked in and don't 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 child. I, I just hated it. I love Riley though. At the end of the day, I love her sometimes. She just, Riley just don't be here for the camera. She, She's like, oh, why did I have to come out this episode? She, you know what? You know who Riley reminds me of? Riley is the damn donkey off of Winnie the Pooh. Eeyore. Oh, why bother? She's just such a drag. She's such a drag. I hate it. Um, What else was going on? Uh, what else is going on? Shit, this this episode just had a lot of boring ass shit going on, but it was fun at the same time. It it just took too long to get to the damn point. Um, so okay, I'm I'm turning the fuck on now. 
So we get the women just getting back from the um the trip in the Philippines or Philippians if for you uh, Christian folk, <laughs> okay, for you black Christians, Philippians, they just got from Philipp Philippians or whatever. And shit is kinda calmed down, but they're just trying to find their damn way. They trying to find out, you know, what the hell they gonna do. Cause, you know, the season get ready to end. We need some turned up shit for the for the for the ending. Cause the damn reunion coming. We need to be turned up. Somebody need to be dragged on the floor. We just need some drama, basically. So basically, um, uh, what else? Phaedra end up and, and and I felt where Phaedra was coming from coming from because Phaedra had um she gave the woman that she saw in um the Philippines some money. The woman had said she you know, her husband had got killed and murdered da, 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 and you know she's raising kids and da 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 and she don't have no father and, and Phaedra you know felt it upon herself to give that woman some money and you know what I don't think Phaedra was doing for the camera I didn't feel it I've been put on spot like that I work in the pharmacy. So I see people coming there all the time and, you know, they can't pay for their prescriptions. They can't sometimes, you know, but, you know, sometimes the spirit does talk to me. Sometimes the spirit, you know, talks to me He just and it just be like, you know, help her out. Help her such and such person out. And it's kind of difficult working there because you see so much bullshit every day that you become to become a, you start to become a robot. But I still make sure I have those feelings. I still make sure I treat everybody with a clean slate no matter how many people have fucked me over that that day. So this woman here came in. I'm telling y'all a story. I know I'm getting off topic. But it just touched me. And so much stuff has been going on. That it's not even a black beat neck roast. It's really just. Like I feel like we at church. And I'm letting stuff go. I'm burying a lot of things. This is probably my last black beat neck roast video in, in this apartment. This will be. Matter of fact. This will be my last black beat neck roast in this apartment. I'm moving down. Um. Just, you know, downgrading like I said I was going to do. And I'm going to be taking the time upon myself to document this whole transition. Um, that are some new things I'm about to work on as far as blocking my everyday life. You all tell me how you all are interested about that. Just me, you know, going through this cause it, this transition. I think it's going to be something new, so I want to document it. It's going to be very fun and interesting. There's going to be some ups and some downs. I just want to take you all on run for that ride. And I just want, you know, you all to see that, you know, I'm just human, just like you all are, too. Shit, look at my, my motherfucking hair. My, if I was to perm my motherfucking beard, it would be this long, y'all. Ooh, look at that. It, look at that. Like it's a damn thing. But that's foolish. Look how long my damn beard hair is. But it just it just grow. My black is beautiful. Everybody be talking about, y'all should need to do something about your beard. I love my beard. So, back to the point. This woman was, you know, she... She came in the pharmacy and she needed some medication for her ears. She had been she had not been feeling good. She had been sick and she she had a um deductible on her her um her thing, her her insurance. It was like hundred some dollars. So I ended up finding her coupon. I ended up finding her coupon to drop dropped the prescription down to ninety dollars. And she I can tell she really needed it. So I took it upon myself and I gave her like what fifty five, sixty dollars on her prescription. And then, you know, she came back the next day and she gave me $10 or whatever. And she was just like, thank you, and da, da, da. And I did that because sometimes the spirit will speak to you. Now, sometimes you need, like Phaedra said, you got to let you let him use you as a vessel. And that's what I did. I said, you know what? I will probably drink this money up. I was probably spending on food. This not going to hurt me that bad to give this woman $55 or $60. And now, I've been blessed 10, 15, 100 times over in the last couple of years. People have done extraordinary things for me, have been there for me, so I just passed it on. And, I, and you know, sometimes this week I'm encouraging every one of the J's to pass it on. Pass it on. If you see somebody that might need some help, pass it on. Do something this week, during this week of April, during this week, I want you to bless somebody. Take it upon yourself and bless. do something for somebody that is not that you do not know. Somebody that you do not know. Let the Spirit use you and bless somebody so they go be a blessing to somebody else. And that's all I got you. I'm feeling it. Or maybe be the liquor. It's just been a wonderful week. I'm just it's just been everything. So let's get back to the review. Um, um so Todd and Ken end up having a dinner date or whatever, and the server who served him was so damn fine. Ooh, he was so he was tall. Just brown skin. He just he just had a nice little build, a nice little booty. He looked so cute in his jeans. Oh, he was so sexy. I love me a sex ass server. Oof. Mm, mm, mm. This guy I know in Atlanta. He's a server. He's really, really cute. He's really cute. 
He's built like a dancer or some shit. I like him. He's cool or whatever. Um, so, Ken asked him just out of nowhere. She got her titties out. She said, do you want a baby? And I'm like, Ken, this is not the place to be talking about you want a kid. And Todd just basically saying, I got too much going on. I'm back. My, my show just got green lighted for a second um, season. And I think, he, and well, of course, y'all know he's talking about Hollywood Divas. Um, I'm kind of interested to see if Paula Parker done got her teeth fixed. Um, or she didn't got she didn't finally bought her some luggage. Um, cause I got tired of her ass paddling around them damn bags and them goddamn garbage bags and shit. That shit was damn fool. I, I really hated it. Um, but I, Candy, it's just like I feel like Todd is doing that shit because he feels like he has to do something because your mama like oh he using you for the money. Candy, if you want to pay Todd to dick you down and you want to do that bitch, that's your motherfucking money. You can do whatever you want to. If you don't want Todd to work, you want to tell him to be good, be well, all that type of stuff, you know, just be the man, and you ain't got to be doing all this and that, you ain't got nothing to prove, then tell him that because I feel like him in that whole situation with, um, him in that whole situation with Mama Joyce kind of fucked him over to the point that he feel like he got to do something. And that might be just his passion. He might just want to do something, period. But I feel like Mama Joyce played a point in that, like, him shading about this, this coin situation. And, you know, Candy, this your money, baby. You can do what you want to. I, it men trick off, too. So, why, you know, if man want to trick, or woman want to trick off on a man, you know, they can. That's they, it's their prerogative, bitch. It's your money. Do what you want to do with it. If you want to trick off, you got it. Long, but you know, just make sure you ain't counseling no more plays and shit. And da da da. So it is with that. Um, Cynthia in this damn Jamaican accent shit. Her and Pete, she trying to practice with Peter. And child, she had nerd ask Peter, um, what is your what's your favorite thing to say? And I, I said, can I borrow some more money? Or I fucked up our credit again? Or bitch, I ran your credit again? Or you know, like. Cynthia, I don't know what to tell your ass. You try to get this whack ass Jamaican shit where life fails on with Kenya Moore. Girl, that shit is late as hell. Um, Kenya, in this damn Jamaican, this Craig, J Kenya didn't hire some damn Craigslist folks to record this whack ass short documentary that's going straight to YouTube that would not be approved for partnership. Would not, like Kenya, girl, just sit down. And enjoy the ride while you can. Because we know your boot is going to collapse like some new uh, fucking new fucking piece of fucking um, a new box. Okay, going to collapse. You know, you got to, I don't know how to even pronounce it. Your boot is laid like a fucked up box. We, we just trying to keep it open, but it keeps on collapsing. Because it's just tied and delayed and your boot is wopside. Your booty look like a fucked up microwave. The door won't close. It's just always open and the light is always flashing. But nobody's listening, and it's not recording. It's not on. Okay, I don't know what to say about this shit. Life fails on a fool, and, and she taking it real serious. I can't wait to see life fails on. It's gonna be real cute. Phaedra ended up doing an initiative um, for black men and all that type of stuff. I thought that was very very cute. She marching in there like one band, one sound. She wanted to. I was here for it. I was here for it. She did it. She did it. Um, but it wasn't two, three minutes later before it started being some jam drama. We got Nene walked in and it was so goddamn funny. Nene walked in and she owned the damn room. And when I tell y'all, I got to sit up straight. I don't give a fuck if I was late. That's what the fuck I'm going to do at the fucking blackout. I don't give a damn if motherfucker take me off the GoFundMe page. I don't give a damn if you take me off the marquee. You can take me. I'm going to walk in that motherfucker just like Nene did. Oh, it's kind of hot in here. Hello. Bitch, when Nene did that, she spoke to my damn spirit. That's how you come in a room where you know hoes don't like your ass. Not saying the people in the blackout don't like me. Not saying that. Because y'all know y'all like to spend shit. But that's how you walk in and you just own the room. You just own it. You just own it. She walked in and she, and she just knows she's the shit. It's just so much. I love it. I love the pettiness. And I just love how she, like folks were bothered as she walked in. Oh, that she was just everything. So we got Claudia couldn't, Chlamydia couldn't wait to start fucking with Nene and start talking to her. Da, da, da. And Nene was just like, oh, yes, okay. Uh, and I just, she was just so petty and just 
just nothing with Claudia S. And Claudia could not take it. Claudia could not take it because I feel like Nene knows Claudia wants to start some type of shit with her ass so she can have some sort of storyline. Every time Claudia tries to do it, Nene don't do nothing but walk away. She just refuses to give Claudia any airtime. And let me tell you something. You can say what you want to about Nene. Y'all can talk to her bad. But if the tea's coming from what I've been reading, they said Bravo gave her a bonus just to be on the next season of Housewives. I don't know how true this shit is, but if it is true, goddamn. But Nene is the star of the show. As much as we can't stand her ass, she's the star of the damn show. She's in front of the goddamn show with the peach. I mean, let's be honest. Let's just be honest. She's the fucking Beyonce. Of the, she might not be the prettiest Beyonce, but she's the Beyonce with the half wedding wavy ass wig. And Claudia just kept asking, you know, kept chasing her. It was just so petty. And I'm like, Claudia, you know, why are you, why are you harassing her? Why is your Lucky Charms fucking marshmallow toe ass right here chasing Nene ass? Like, you're just like, you're going to talk to me. You're just like a little fucking child. Sit your big no bell pepper face ass down, bitch. You're getting on my nerves, Claudia. Like, girl, it was, just, it was just too much. Now I'm getting pissed off. Like, you were chasing her ass. And she's just like, okay, girl, just leave me alone. And I feel like somebody said, girl, just leave me alone. Da, da, da. Go. Go away from me with this. And you just kept chasing her. And she just didn't have time. Well, she can talk to me. She owes me something. No, she don't owe you. And when she told your ass, I don't owe you shit. Who are you? Like, girl, I don't give a fuck if you are on this show. I don't have to record your ass. I'm not going to do anything. And the producer's going to be fine with it. She, and you know it was everything. And I'm so glad that damn black woman came and told Daz, "Look, I know y'all want to film me some shit, but it's some hungry ass black men out here that need their chicken and they need some more rolls. So, okay, Claudia, put your gloves on your toes and come on, girl." And Nene outside talking to, uh, and I feel like they were slick trying gang up, but I feel like Nene should have sat down and talked with her shit with Doctor Jeff, but she didn't, and she done with it, and she done with it. Leave it alone, she don't want to talk about it. And I'm glad Kenya stopped her from trying to chase her. Like, it, it was getting to a point that it was getting loud and people could hear outside. Like, it was just very unprofessional. But I'm not surprised with Claudia anyway. She liked the made light skin and dark skin jokes and shit, talk about black folks, such and such. So it can't be seen. So, I mean, girl, I, I don't know what. You won't have no coos in the damn way, so I don't know what to say about your ass. Other than that, I can't wait for this episode next week. I can't wait to see Peter ass be messy as hell. I cannot wait to see Peter be messy once again and put fucking Apollo ass on, on speakerphone so folks can hear his ass talk shit. Um, and he running Cynthia credit in the ground. I just bought it. And it's like, damn. Bitch, you ain't gonna never. You ain't. You ain't gonna never. You ain't gonna never. Get out of debt with Peter ass. Because he keep running your shit through the goddamn ground. And it's so sad. It's so sad, girl. Jesus be a credit score. Because you going to need one. Okay? You going to need it. That's all I got. This episode with How Hawaii was decent. I liked it. I'm ready for the season to end. I'm ready for season finale. I'm ready for the reunion. So we can move on to bigger and better shit. That's all I got. This episode was cute. I liked it for the most part, but it could have been a little bit better. But I liked the little shady part, so it was what it was. That's all I got. Follow me on Twitter, JustinJ1232. Follow me on Instagram, JustinJ1232. That's all I got. And I love y'all, and I will talk to y'all later. Deuces.